All right, so under this new rule, which Congress had no say in, doctors must perform gender transition procedures or treatments on patients, including children, even if the doctor believes the procedures could be harmful. And if doctors refuse, poof, all federal dollars go away. It is the heavy hand of a despotic government that the framers of the Constitution worked so hard to try and prevent. But it's here. All right, so what do we do about it? Joining me now from New York City, constitutional law attorney and advisor to the Convention of the States Project, Jenna Ellis. Jenna, uh, uh, Jenna you're based out of uh, Colorado, which is a state that is in flux right now. What is the status of a possible uh, Article 5 Convention of the States participation out of the great state of Colorado? Well, I can tell you, Graham, that we have a really committed team there, myself included, and we actually have some really good uh, legislators on both sides that uh, will move forward with our application this term. So we're very hopeful in Colorado as well as additional states. What is your role uh, in, in trying to move this through the legislature? My role specifically is an advisor to the Convention of States as a constitutional attorney and professor. I'm also the legislative liaison and do media appearances for Convention of States. All right, so you, you're also a constitutional law professor. Um, I don't know whether you assign your students to read the Federalist Papers, but I think it would be a good homework assignment for these legislators to read the Federalist Papers as well as, you know, try and understand both ends of Article 5, do you not? Absolutely. And actually, my book that's titled The Legal Basis for a Moral Constitution goes into the Federalist Papers, specifically Hamilton's 81, and talks about um, how the Bill of Rights was, uh, Hamilton objected to that because he understood that rights are not given by government. They're unalienable and come from God. And so uh, there's actually a senator in Colorado that for the next legislative term coming up in November is going to give my book to each of the incoming senators in Colorado. And hopefully they will read the book and it ends with an argument for convention of states. Nice. Well, uh, let's face it, uh, we're in dire times in this country, and if Hillary Clinton is elected, um, I believe the need for an Article 5 Convention of the States grows even stronger. Um, uh, right now, we're at eight states that uh, have agreed to participate in an Article 5, need 26 more. Do you think that's attainable in the not-too-distant future? Absolutely. I think uh, not only is it attainable, but it will happen. And we're seeing, especially with this election cycle, that whether people are never Trump, never Hillary, or never mind, uh, people are really wanting to understand the Constitution in a new way that hasn't happened for a few generations, probably. And so really taking back this understanding of state sovereignty and what um, Mason really articulated to the convention was that the states need to have that power to curb Washington because Congress will not restrain itself. And even if Hillary Clinton loses and Donald Trump is elected president and he tries to move this country back into a constitutional direction, we're still going to need an Article 5. Why? Because one president, one elected official, or even hundreds of elected officials cannot undo the structural damage that this country has suffered over the last 100 years. Would you agree? Absolutely. And especially over the past 50 and 60 years with the Supreme Court decisions, they've become a super legislature. And from a constitutional law perspective, we're seeing that really we have two constitutions. We have the written one and then we have the case law precedent that the Supreme Court has said we are over and above the Constitution. We can proof text. We can take these words and phrases, lift them out of the Constitution. We can reinterpret them any way that we wish, like the General Welfare Clause and the Commerce clause and that's done extreme and enormous damage so we need an article 5 convention specifically on those two issues as well to have a constitutional definition of the general welfare clause and the commerce clause which are both on the convention of states project application as well as uh, possible term limits balanced budget amendment i could go on and on and on well you keep educating both your students and the legislature and uh, we'll keep pushing for an Article 5 here because even if Hillary Clinton is denied the White House, we're still going to need the Convention of the States. Jennifer. The Founding Fathers knew this might happen. Article 5 of the Constitution gives the states the power to stop a runaway federal government, a Convention of States to amend the Constitution. It's the only solution as big as the problem. It's time to stand up, speak up, and show up. Join us at conventionofstate.com.